Okay. Um, we'll start with how your parents or how your family came to be in Roscommon. This is Ralph. Yeah. How mom and pa got to be in Roscommon. Mm -hmm. Give me their names first. Uh, my dad's name was John Enfred Ostling, and my mother's name was uh, Wilhelmina Christina Skagerberg. And they met in some place in Minnesota. Harvey, wasn't it? Harvey, I think maybe Harvey, Minnesota. No, no, that's Harvey, Illinois. Illinois, but they yeah. were both from Sweden. But they were both from Sweden. And my dad worked in a uh, Pullman shop in Chicago where they make the Pullman cars. And uh, they were married at the time. And uh, he, his health uh, prompted a visit to northern Michigan where they had purchased a piece of property uh, sight on scene from, I don't remember who, the, who it was now, somebody from St. Helen. Old Stucky, yeah. And uh, uh, my dad came up here in 1902, I believe it was 1902 and uh, walked out from Roscommon, this is about three miles out of town, walked out with his uh, bowler hat on and his Chesterfield coat in the snow and uh, f found out the, the general area where the property was. How much did went, they buy? They bought uh, 40, 40 acres. Yeah, and it was sight on scene. Uh, as did a lot of the other people around here during that time. The uh, Sotohomes and uh, the Martinsons and all of the the uh, Swede settlement people bought about the same time. It was sort yeah. of a scam, <laughs> real estate scam. Apparently. Yeah, where the, where they bought it, you know, well, sight on scene. It was people. Saint Helen was the same thing. They sold the the old old Carter sold lots to people, <laughs> ostensibly to raise chickens. Well, in order to raise livestock, you've got to have land that will grow things, and the land doesn't grow anything, and people built, he'd show pictures of big chicken coops, and God only knows how he got them, but there were no chicken farmers here, and you couldn't raise chickens, you couldn't raise anything. <laughs> oh, yes, you could well, raise rocks and jack pines. Potatoes, about all, once you got a little you could raise. Clear. Yeah, we were, and anyway, uh, as I said, uh, health prompted them to my dad's health prompted him to move up here, and uh, they put up a little uh, tar paper shack, I guess 14 by 20, 20. and uh, uh, Harold, was, Harold was a baby at that time. He was the only one, and I think, I don't know if it was, it was the early 1900s. I can't remember the exact date that they they moved in, on the sign up there. but uh, had that. yeah, I, I think so. And uh, originally, my dad started out farming, clearing the land, and and because it was all jack pine and scrub oak, and uh, started to farm. And he was a carpenter by trade, so he he. Uh, got some jobs uh, doing carpenter camp. work, and he, but he went to work in the lumber camp at the, at the same time. The gills. Started down the, down the track. He used to go on. He used to ride the, ride the train down there on Monday and work in the woods until Friday and ride the train back up here. And she'd meet and him with... You're the, talking about gills, that's right. Gill right sighting. Now. Yeah. Uh, is that Between... Roscommon St. Helen, yeah, Gill sighting. Yep. I don't mean to interrupt, but she's, Ma said she used to meet him at the door with uh, some kind of disinfectant, I can't remember. Well, to get the lice off. Yeah, you know. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. room and a tub full of disinfectant before oh, yeah. he could even go in, hop in and take yep. a bath because he'd been in, the, they were just full of lice from the <laughs> lumber camp. And consequently, the, the, uh, Siblings came along. Uh, there were, at, at full count, can't remember, there was Harold, Bob, George, Arv, Art, Edna, Kenny, and myself. Yeah. And that's she that, she that's seven. Uh, one baby died at childbirth. So that was quite a bunch. 
There were, I think, at one time there were what, five or six of them in the 14, in the 14, 14 by 20 form. thing. Yeah. But, and that's the house that's there now. That's uh, that they added on to the. the back where Jimmy has an office yeah. right in that area. Yeah. So the building is still intact the way your father built it, or it's been added on? It's been added on to and added on to, and then well, they the built a house and the, the the big house in the front. Main shape of the, the big house is he built that. Yeah. When, and they were uh, they all moved in there when there were five boys. Yep. And that's primarily the same shape as it was. And they Jimmy added on a well they a little part to the east, but the main it was built three three or four times over but the, the years. The, I mean, the main stairway is still there. The upstairs is the same, other than he's added the bathroom and that. But the, but the main structure of the house is, is pretty much the same. Then when your parents moved into the, the new house, what, how did they use the 14 by 20? Grandpa Pete went that was in a, there pretty that, soon. That was the garage. Oh, okay. oh. And then, and then uh, my mother's dad, we called him Grandpa Pete, Peter V. Skagerberg. He's in his 90s. Yeah, moved in there. He was, I think, he was 95 when he died. And he couldn't walk. Uh, no. He had whatever he had, he couldn't. He had rheumatism. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he couldn't get up. They had The guys had to come home at noon, wherever they were working by then, and put him on a can and carry his meals up to him. And yeah. And so your mother really took care of him. Oh, yeah. Oh, For this for was years. She, uh, yeah. This mother had the most kids. She took care of Bob Skaggs' kids when his wife were. That was his. <laughs> he was her brother, you know, the Skaggs. Oh, okay. And of course, the, he had a kind of a cranky wife, and I suppose she had reason to be. And she would take off every once in a while and go down wherever she came from and leave him with the three or four little kids, and so he'd have to go to work at five o'clock in the morning, and he'd bring his kids over to office for her to take care of till they went to school. Yep. She'd feed them breakfast, and she'd collect them at night till he got out of work. I mean, it was just incredible, the, the um, amount of work, just the labor intensiveness that had to go on to keep all those people together. I'm just amazed. <laughs> But Aunt Amelia, you know, Winifred, uh, Winifred uh, Matheson is, uh, is the, her niece, her, her mother, and she only had Winifred, but she was not taking care of any kids, believe me. <laughs> no, Amelia, they lived just down the road from there. Yeah. They lived out in this area? They lived where, do you remember where Arv and June used to live? Yes, on Oakwood? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's where they... Uh, the, yeah, Amelia and Ed uh, uh, Nordstrom uh, built that place. And, and, and your other, uh, your uncle, who's the one that died fairly young, Red Skaggs' father? Ed. Oh, Ed, yeah. Uh, he and Vera lived, you know where that old house is and somebody just bought to restore the Victor, where Carol Jones lived? Yeah, the our next door neighbors are doing Yes. And what's their are name? they? Yes. Tom and Joan Bates. Tom and Joan Bates. Oh. Okay, that's where... And Vera that place is where Grandpa Pete, Peter V. Skagerberg, came, came and lived in that place originally. Did he build it? I'm not sure if he built it or not. What did he do? I, He's an old I doubt it. He he, I can't ever remember doing anything. Where did he live? Yeah. It was? It is. Oh, they've taken all that green wear paper off and yeah. it's beautiful. Really? Uh, does the, are, are the rafters still there? Have they? I remember I remember staying there. Oh god, when I was just a little kid in in nineteen thirty two maybe. Mm -hmm. Thirty five. Uh, staying upstairs there. When it was rainy, great sound. And well, that then that would have been rough. where Gene and Laverne Myers and 
Pinky and and Ralph, Red. Ralph Red Skaggerberg. Right. I saw Red again the other day, and he looks yeah. pretty. He's got himself. He does. He looks good. All knocked into shape somewhere. Or Except I saw him at the saw him at Ken's garage oh, a couple of months ago. Oh, he did, said he knew me. He, he knows know me. me. He always calls me by my first name. He didn't know me. I said, "Hi, Red. How are you?" He said, "Hi," and uh, Kenny Water said. And then he didn't say any more. And Kenny Water said, you know who this is? He said, no. He says, well, it's your cousin. <laughs> Ralph, ah, it is not your cousin. That is not. And he insisted it wasn't. And he said, yeah. my cousin's Ralph Rossi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kenny said, should I tell him? He said, nah. No. Don't bother him. Well, so Don't your, bother. your so, family that came was mostly your sister's, your mother's. Right. Then did, um, did your father have brothers and sisters that came also? No. They were all in Sweden? They were all, they they all except one except were in Sweden, one. and that was a big family. I think there were six or seven in, uh -huh. in that family. Edna knows all he the history of that. Who, I don't know where he got his education, but he was an engineer for General Motors. When, and he yeah. lived in, they lived in New York City. Yeah. What was his they sort of, Alfred, Alfred, they sort of lost... Yeah. Really lost track of. Oh, my dad had a sister who visited here in about 1950, mm -hmm. maybe something like that. From yeah, Sweden, from Sweden. Yeah. And it's her, his her grandson that's doing this big. They're doing a great big uh, yeah. genealogy, and that's her grandson. And he lives out. In okay. Well, how long? Let's right. get back to your father that working at Gale. How long did he do that? Oh, he did that for. Uh, a few years, Until that and along with the farming, and then uh, uh, he, he then he got a job with Ike Shirey with, and he the mill. with uh, he may have he may have worked a little bit with Ayla Soderholm. I don't know uh, early on, but uh, most of the most of the time he and Ike Shirey were were uh, were. We worked together, yeah. My dad worked for him for years and years. And of course, he d was doing carpenter work when he was 70, seven, well, the year before he died, 73, 73, and yeah. Then he and my brother, he and my oldest brother, Harold, uh, worked together from, oh, 1945. Just after, just after the war, until, uh, well, Wait, until he died. Didn't he work during the war? Fifty-two. With Harold? No, Harold was in the hardware store. Well, where did Pa do? He he was he worked here. Oh, he just say, he worked well, by I himself. Had, yeah, I, I worked with him then. He was still alive because they oh. built that great big house of uh, that great big log place of Fishers, and that was in the early forties. Well, I beg to differ with you. That was in the 30s. What? That was about 35. Yeah. What year were you born now? 27. You're not like 60 or 27. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be 73 come July 3rd. You'll be 74. 74. I'll be 74, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you grew up in the, the 30s here. Tell me, where did you go to school? Did 30. you start here at the school? Nope. I was I started in 1932 in Roscommon. They had just built that school. I think that school was built in 30 or 31. First year, you said. And uh, it was the first or second year that that school was in operation. But the other boys that uh, graduated or went to school, I don't all I don't know if all of them went there, didn't who who finished or not. Harold Harold didn't finish. Harold didn't. Uh, Oh yeah, Bob was and, uh, graduated from Ferris and, too. Uh, Art. And Art was. And Edna. Art's last year, I think, was here, and Edna. No, Edna didn't. Edna yeah, no went down there. Yeah, I guess she, I guess she might have too. To Wayne. Yeah. Wayne. Yeah. And that was through the eighth grade. Yep. Yeah. I would guess. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now she might have not gone all the way to the eighth grade because they might have went to school 
Well, when they closed that school then and everyone started going into town, mm -hmm. there would have to be a number of years before the church started using it. What, the, the church that? started using that uh, building in 1934 or 35. Yeah. So in those three or four years, did you folks maintain it or what happened to it? Uh, it was just sort of just empty, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember of anybody anybody being in there. No. Yeah, it had to be. It had to be. And I know it started in 35. Because I would have been, what, 28? Well, it's a perfect situation to start a church. Yeah. Well, the folks, my dad, that was part of the 40 acres that they had. And they, my dad donated that, that acre there to build the, to build the Wayne build school. school. Yeah. And he and whoever else I don't remember who built the school. Well, but. He and whoever else wanted to help him remodeled it into the church. Oh, yeah. Well, that was, that, that was, was the, later. that was, that oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, well, well, they did a little bit of. But not much. Not much. Not much. No. Were you there when they had the, the, uh, no, that young, uh, the past, the student? Yeah. Certainly. Lived in the back there in the coal bin. Mm -hmm. Had that big round stove. Lived in with the church. Stove. Yeah, in the back. Lived in the back of the church. Oh, that Just, was in uh, Old Crimey. Well, that's when, like, when we were married, 47, 46, yeah. 47, yeah. going yeah. in there. But they had continually made improvements in the church. Yeah. Because when I came here, they had that nice old oak altar. Altar, there, yeah. The nice, the, the, what do you call it? The communion oh. rail. The communion yeah. rail. Oh, yeah. Did your father build that? that? Was all, no. Who built it? Aloff Sutterholm, I think, built that, I believe. But he, all those old guys all Harold and John, uh, Harold Ogren, John Cedarberg, uh, old man, Elif Soderholm, uh, my dad. Uh, I'm surprised he worked because he didn't go to church. Who, Elif? No. Yeah. And. Uh, she must have brought him into going over there. Not Kirsty. <laughs> no. Uh, I can't remember who else. I don't know if old Tori Sterner but I can't even remember mm -hmm. him doing anything but sitting in a chair with <laughs> a big lump and hollering at her. Sterner, where uh, Dave and, and Helen live. Oh. No. They didn't spell that. S-T-E-R-N-E-R. Sterner. Yeah. They uh, were a Swedish couple, too, but they didn't have anything. No children. No kids, and he was no. crankier than an old bear. At least he was. The <laughs> Tori? Oh, no. <laughs> he was. Uh, when did Well, they, when they retired, they lived, uh, where in the hell did they live? They lived at... Uh, Detroit, didn't they? Johnson. I think so. Oro, Oro Johnson, yeah. Uh, well, wherever and, they lived, I think they lived in Detroit, because I know those girls grew up right, in Detroit. Right, yeah. Uh, I think that when he retired, you know, they used to come up and visit Bob and Esther, and, sure. and uh, I suppose they knew the place was vacant for sale and whatever, and they... They bought it. They bought it and... So that was a retirement home for them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they, they never, never lived here. here. Uh -uh. Oh, no, yeah. no. Definitely. In fact, very few people around here even knew them. What was her first name? Hilma. Yeah, Hilma. No, are you talking oh, about who? Emily. Oh, Emily. Emily. Oh, I thought you were talking about Sterner. No, no, no. I'm talking about... The Johnsons? Emily Johnson. Emily, yeah. And John. Yeah, in oral. That, oh, yeah. <laughs> Who was that? That's, that was his name. John, but put... Oh, that's the way you say it in Swedish? Yep, yeah, oral. No, he's not that's, Swedish. That's Finnish. Oh, they, they are Finnish. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. don't say John like that in Swedish. I can't remember how you say it, but that's, that's a Finnish word. Yeah. Uh, they were both... Both Emily and John were finished. Oh, yeah, 
they always had the sauna. Okay. Yep. They had what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's get back to you starting at school mm-hmm. in town then. How did you get there? Well, I walked up here both ways. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Vic Anderson picked me up. He was uh, lived over the hill. You know where the Anderson place is there. He drove the school bus. Oh, okay. And what yeah, in the world had a school, school bus. bus have looked like in the well, world? it was square. <laughs> it was it was wood. I had a wood body. It was square. Would carry probably thirty kids. Yeah, an old AV. Vic Anderson was about four foot five tall. Yeah. He wow. was a he was a a widower. Father? Pardon? Was that Leonard's father? That's Leonard's grandfather. Oh, his grandfather. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. He, Eddie and yeah, right. Yeah. He, uh, that family had had uh nine boys. Eight or nine boys. And the mother died when the youngest was three years old and there was never a, another wife, a female, in that house. He and, raised, and all those raised all those, all those yeah. boys. And yeah. uh, now, was it you or who said that their house was oyster spouse? This was. And they, one boy did the bacon, and one boy did this, and one boy did that, and he had them all organized right into it. Yeah. And he had a girlfriend for a thousand years. Uh, Mary Wargo. Mary Wargo, but they never got married. He'd go see her. <laughs> Ralph would say, I don't think I ever saw him. Or Who? her either. Mike or Mary? Uh, Mary? They were brother and sister. Mike lived Mike over. and Mary Wargo lived down at the end of uh, Murphy Road, where it meets Robinson Lake Road. Oh, right on the corner. In that little house there, yeah. And, and Ralph and I'd be out of an evening going somewhere or sometimes parked on the hill <laughs> and, and this car would come chugging along and Ralph would say, well, that's Vic going over to see Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Coming yeah. home from Mary, yeah. as, depending on what time of night it was. What did he do for a living besides drive bus? He had to do something before that. What in the world? How did You know, he, he might have, he might have, he might have done some carpenter work too. But so I can't remember. I. That was when it started. Yeah. That's when they were built. People yeah. started to buy. Their people started to come up here, and they had all these old old hotels, like the Carpenter Hotel and the Burdell Hotel, and, and people would come on the train and. A lot of a lot of Saginaw Bay City, people. In Chicago. Well, yeah, in Midland. That's where, uh, well, the old places like Cottage Grove, Pine Woods, Lakeside. They're all lakeside they, they Saginaw people. Uh, starting then, and that's yeah. well, Pa and Look how and Ike, and that's how they, they made their living. Made a living. Yeah. And a good thing, because I know one of the things that Rel's mother was always mentioning, and now I don't know if any of the other Swedes, if any of them were, but she always said we were never on welfare. She was proud of that. Yes, she was. Oh, sure. yeah. And she, I remember... Uh, she would, they, at that time, I can remember when I was a little girl, where I came from, they had, you didn't have really, they didn't have welfare money, but they gave food out to needy families. <coughs> and uh, naturally, they gave staples, like two, three kinds of flour and beans and butter beans and, and uh, all kinds of stuff to, that you had to know how to use. And the cornmeal and and uh, she re- said she demanded, I don't know who ran that program, but she said whoever it was came to her and asked her if she would teach some of these younger women how to use, how to bake, how to do. And she said she remembers going to somebody's house and the woman pawed through the groceries and she says, there's all this stuff here but nothing to eat. <laughs> you, you don't know who started that? No. Old uh, Glenn Denning was from Glenn Denning? from Prudenville, <laughs> from Houghton Lake, was the was the first uh, welfare, welfare commissioner. And I'll tell you who else. Well, Alice Al- Gibbons Alice was the first used to get worker. art. She was the first. To my brother to uh, help, her help her deliver this 
stuff. I remember once in a while, I could go with them. Oh, yeah? Out to, yeah. Oh, out to had, Nestor and... She had yeah. some funny stories. You had uh, to know my stepmother. Yeah. I mean, first of all, she was a snob of the first order. I mean, she thought she was royalty, believe Well, me. she was among the... Well, she was the, a Her family was okay, er, let's, early settlers. Let's yeah. establish her who we're talking about. We're talking about Alice Gibbons Dean. Alice and that's Gibbons Vern Dean. Blanchard's daughter. Laverne, and that's Michael Gibbons' daughter. And she went away to school to Wayne University, and she graduated, and she came back here as the first, she was the first head of the, uh, when they started, a Bureau of Social Aid. That's what they called it, the Bureau of Social Aid. Yep. And that's when she had Ralph's young brother helping her and whatever. And that was in, when was that? Oh, that would have been the late 30s or early 40s. Before World War II. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she was married to your father. Yeah, but not till she was thirty-seven years and old. Your See, she was a young woman when she. Oh, this was before she was your stepmother. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. You know, long this. before. Yeah. But I've heard. Your father's her, name? My father's name was Lauren Dean. Lauren Dean. Okay. And he was sort of a transient through here. He drove an auto hallway truck, and he had all these pals that hunted and fished, and he got to know everybody, and then. Through some of his pals, he got to know Alice, and this was after, long after my mother died, and they were married like in their late 30s. But anyway, some of the stories she used to tell, she had this great big 1941 Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile. <laughs> big long Olds 98. Now, I could never figure out how Alice could become a social worker to begin with, especially in an area like this, where she, she had to go in these places over by Nestor, and then people had dirt floors, and that, I mean, it was bad news. And Alice, you know, I can just see her rearing back if she smelled anything funny, or, but she never, I don't know, the, the people loved her. They loved her. And they were always giving her things like live geese and <laughs> live yeah. ducks. Yeah. <laughs> and she'd come home and wouldn't know what in the hell to do with any of this stuff. And that's when uh, Thelma Bowers, Thelma Sinclair, worked for Alice, cleaned her house, oh. washed her clothes. Where did Alice live? She lived behind, she and her dad and her aunt lived behind the Roscommon Hotel in what they call the annex. Spruce Lodge. And it was okay. a great big... And that's not there anymore. That was torn down. Yeah. About, okay. uh, it's an apartment, apartment house. It, it was separate from the Spruce, but right behind it. Yep. Right behind okay. it. Yeah. And as I say, Alice was a snob of the first water. And she... But but she would never... These people didn't know it. They thought she was just the nice down-to-earth lady. <laughs> And she would go into some of these places. And I remember going with her one time when I was pretty young, um, when I was up here visiting them, into this old place in, in Nestor. And my God, the chickens were on the table and the goats were in the house. And, and Alice was talking to these people just like they were all great pals. And, <laughs> and they would give her all kinds of stuff, like eggs and... Sure. Well, everything sure. under the well, sun. she was helping them out. Oh, of course. Them. And it was like she was doing it personally. You know, was that a state agency or yeah, yeah. Oh, or sure. Bureau of Social no, Aid. No, it was county. No, Bureau of Social Aid was state. Was state. Was oh, maybe state. she was the county. When it was first yeah. started, Glenn Denning was the county guy. Alice was the first one that came here when the Bureau of Social Aids all over the state were started. I'll take your word for that. And she's, one time somebody sent her home with a bushel of grapes. Now, Alice couldn't even boil water, believe me. Yes, she could open a can of tuna fish and throw it in a dish with some lettuce and put some mayonnaise on it and make it tuna fish salad. But I could smell those grapes yet. She put them in the hall closet, or Donnie put them in the hall closet. And there they sat. 
And Thelma would come in every day and say, well, what are we going to do out of those grapes? And pretty soon the grapes are getting fruit flies and, and it's smelling like a, a winery in there. And so we don't know. Thelma says, well, she'll make jelly. And I remember thinking, ye gods and fishes, little, how are we going to make jelly out of They're rotten. You know, that's what went through my mind. I'm about 15 years old. I didn't know much about cooking either, but I knew that I thought those grapes were, had had it. Well, by golly, Selma got to cooking and washing those grapes, and she made some grape jelly that I have never had anything like it in my life since. It was the best grape jelly. Wonderful. It was like wine, jelly. Sure, sure. Oh, it was just delicious. <laughs> and then we all fought over who was going to... Who was going to have the, the grape jelly? Oh dear. But Thelma was pretty funny. She had to be pretty tolerant of, uh, of Alice on a regular basis. All the time. Almost every day she was there. Mm -hmm. Well, it was close by for her. To oh yeah, and she, and she moved like a snail. You know, she she, would, she, you, you, no, she, she, you wouldn't have known her, would you? No. Yeah. Oh, man, it, it, no. She, had these, no. she had these great big awful buck teeth. <laughs> Charlie. She ended up working as a custodian in the school. Yeah, but she was a, had, had gotten cleaned up considerably by then. Uh -huh. Well, uh, she married, she married, she was George Bauer's sister. George Bauer's owned that, the corner home there. Where, where, mm -hmm. Who has that now? Who's Tom and John Yeah, okay, those are the people, yeah, right, right. And... She married Charlie Sinclair, and they lived there with George in that house. And <laughs> Thelma was a, you know, she went out and cleaned oh, yeah. for everybody. Well, Alice wasn't too and you, for and you couldn't get into the, that their house. I mean, yeah. she cleaned everything but but her own. Alice was no, sick. but well, she was a cat old. And they called her Tack. Tack. Her name was Thelma Tackleberry before yeah. she married Paul. And Ralph yeah. and my stepmother always called her Tack. Yeah. And so she'd say, uh, well, yeah. I suppose Tack was here slip slopping around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and she, so and don't, great please ones. don't quote Alice in here to make her sound like some old meanie. But you just. You just got it on tape, Thela. That's what you signed that thing for. You just did it, <laughs> and we're not erasing that. So well, there, and there you are. And there you <laughs> and that's the truth. And ain't that well, the truth? Anyway, the, the Blanchard girls. You know who all they were, and known and Edwina and and uh, Vern. Vern was the oldest. Okay, Vern was the oldest, and she's the one that married Michael Gibbons, and they had only one daughter, and that was this Alice. Yeah. But I read somewhere in one of the old hysterical books, one of the original ones, mm -hmm. that Vern Blanchard supposedly <laughs> bicycled out to the Wayne School every day to teach school. Well, I find that awfully hard to Why? believe that, that Alice's mother bicycled out to the Wayne School from town. Why would you think, why would you think that? I mean, why not? Because it was an old, rutted how? Hey, Thela. I mean, it just seems impossible, but maybe so. Maybe so, yeah. I don't know. We used to push Model Ds Where'd up Pioneer know? Hill. Um, Vern's brother, Charles Blanchard, Jr. Well. Who was that, Bud? That was Bud. I didn't know anything about him. He had... He had, did uh, he work in the lumber business with his father? He was, or not. was he ever right in the head? I can't remember. No, he was... He's an alcoholic. Alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, That's all it says, he was an alcoholic. He did not, did not work at all. I don't think he did. I don't think he ever did anything. See, he, his... Now, Theo, you can tell us what, what relation was May, May to, to him. Well, not, not really at all, because not. May was sister to the second wife. Sister, yeah, she oh, was okay. sister oh. to the second Mrs. Blanchard. Right, so but was um, the Mrs. Matheson. Family, yeah. Wasn't she related to them, too? But that's all right. The reason I say that is because uh, Bob Murphy was a sheriff at that time, May, his wife. Uh, Bud was the, sort of the town drunk. He would get plastered 
<laughs> go to jail, and May would put him in jail and, and feed him, you know, until he got and take care of him. Until he, yeah. I never got knew out, him. But he was, did he live to be an orphan? Oh no. <sighs> well, uh, I think, comparatively speaking, yeah, he was probably. I'd say he's probably in the 60s. Well, where was he when I came here? Uh, was Tila, he, I, had, was, I, I thought he was I dead. I don't remember. But if he wasn't, he know. was in an asylum somewhere. Now, I don't know, because I never met him. I never yeah, saw him I don't in know my that, life. But that. I know they used to always be talking about Uncle Bud. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted Yeah. To. But he was, uh, and then Lewis, of course, was the youngest one. That was uh, with the second wife. Right. And the two girls were ahead of him. The two, the two daughters oh. from the second wife. Uh, known in Edwina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's, okay, that's what we have then. I just wondered. The and one we, because Verna is the one we, that we don't know that much about. Alice's from mother. The first, yes, and then and her extra and the grandmother Catherine Haley that was Mr. Blanchard's first wife. Now I don't know anything about her. Okay. Well, that takes care of that. <laughs> well, um, while we're on your family and the Gibbons, how long did Alice Gibbons, Dean, after she married your father, did she continue with that job? For some time until... No, no uh, not too long, they moved. Dad was they got a job driving for Hallwick out of Flint. And of course he was commuting and everything. So somewhere or another they decided to move down in that area. That would have been what? Kurt was it was before Kurt was born. It must have been must have been mm -hmm. around nineteen forty nine or fifty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They moved to Corona. So she had that job all before World War Two and through the war years. Yeah. To the end Until of the they moved to Corona. Yep. And then who had it? Who took over from her? Elaine or uh, Liz? Liz, I Liz, think she could tell you a lot. Uh, Liz Alexander. Yeah, Liz Carlson. Liz Carlson worked for Alice. Oh. Okay. You probably know her. No. Jesse's. Jesse Carlson's sister. Sister. They live out at the lake. You don't know her. You have to find yeah. out about her. You know Alan or uh, Tucker. Tucker. Well. Yeah. That's another sister. That's another right. sister. Yep. And Liz is. As I say, she worked for Alice. Oh, I know who took Alice's place. Katie Resnahan. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that was what is now our DSS. Yep. What is well, FIA? Fa FIA now, Excuse yeah. What they oh, yeah. Family Independence Agency. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, Katie replaced Alice. And as you say... Has gone from there, and God only knows. There's well, been a lot uh, of them. Liz worked for Alice all the time, right out of high school, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll try and check. To try and see her, because I see her every once in a while in the grocery yeah. store. So where do we have you, Ralph? Are you still in elementary school, taking a bus? With I'm, Mr. I'm, <laughs> I'm still in elementary school, and I spent the rest of my life there. Yeah, well, uh, you didn't ride the bus what? very long. No. So well, I rode the bus until I could drive a car, which was... Kenny could drive the car, and you probably rode to school with him, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Until somebody yeah, got their hands on a car. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, that was, that was, what? So what year 19? did you graduate? I graduated, and, well, I, actually, I didn't graduate. You I didn't got out in, in uh, 45. I went on the service before I... But you graduated. I, I, yeah, I graduated. Gee, where that was 1945. Did you go in the service after your brother was died at Lincoln Place? And how long were you in the service? Oh, a year and a half, two years. The war was done by then? War was on its just way. over when I, in fact, I was on my way to Pearl Harbor when the war ended. ended. Oh. You went to Pearl Harbor? I said I was on my way oh, when the war ended. Oh, I you didn't get there. No. <laughs> no. Then where did you? Over there, most of your and I spent most of the time in Hawaii. Did you? Yeah. Well, that wasn't true. No. no, it was it was nice. It was nice. And, and uh, came back to Roscommon. 
and what did I do? Nothing, I Nothing. guess. Nothing. That's when I met you. I was just hard to find a job. Oh, I did. I worked you with worked Bob surveying and surveying a little, and bit. little carpenter work until I went to, <clears throat> then we got married in 1947. I guessed it right, mm -hmm. 1947, and went to school the next year, right? Right. And yeah. where? At uh, Central. Central. Yeah. So you lived down there. Did they have married houses at that time? <laughs> if you can yeah. call it. <laughs> if they did. Now, <laughs> in, the, in a hall. They, like they call them then where, where the... Uh, those awful trailers. Where the mail, well, when I first went there, we, in the room. we didn't... You, rented room. Yeah, you weren't there the first few weeks that I was there, first no. semester maybe I was there. And we lived in a, some old barracks they called the sheep sheds. You and, and Bobby Witt and God only knows Yeah, and then, Daddy McDougal. Yeah, then we got a, when Thela came down, we, did we have a room or did we have that trailer? We had a room over there on Fancher. In, in, oh, that's right. Don't you remember? What a place I smell like cabbage cooking. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, next door to us in another room was uh, Eleanor and uh, what you call him, Barber. I don't know what the hell he was doing down Eleanor there. Eleanor and Barber. Eleanor, Barber, Paul, no, not Paul. Oh, you. Eleanor Scott. Uh, Harold Scott. Harold Scott. Harold and Eleanor Scott. God, what I was, forgot what about What were they doing there? I don't know. Do you remember because, them? No. They had that baby. They had that little girl. They lived in that one room when we beat. Well, one of them must have been going to college to live there. I don't think they were going to college. Oh. I, I don't know why they were in Mount Pleasant. But no, I this was, uh, <clears throat> was th this was not on, on campus. Oh, no. no. This was oh, off in the Shintango. This is on. <laughs> Fancher. And then we got a we we upgraded to a. Huh? I love the term shintangle. Oh, well. Larry Gulick used to call this. Shintangle. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Well, we graduated I, to the trailer. Oh yeah. Then I went to work. I I was a working personnel officer, and I then I got a, then I got to be secretary to the dean of students. No no no, the dean of men. Mm -hmm. Then when the gal who was the dean of secretary of the dean of students. She left. I got to be secretary to the dean of students. So I had some pull. <laughs> you know, we, we, were, we lived in this awful trailer that were all reclaimed trailers from some army camp. Oh, you can't imagine. Huh? Even my mother-in-law, who had lived in a shack, she came down here and she said, I, I, you can't live in this place. It is so awful. And it was, we had a, so what it was we pretty did, bad. We didn't burn up. It was, well, just the width of a a couch like this. And the couch was might have been a little wider than this. It was a pull down, some kind of a pull out couch. Oh, it was just. And it was it about uh, maybe 16 feet long. Mm -hmm. But I figured Barbara Hahn, who came from one of the wealthiest families in, in Saginaw, <laughs> and she lived in she one of those. And I thought, by God, if Barbara Hahn can live in this place, I can live in this place. Oh, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> and she had some of, she had all her. Uh, silver sterling and silver and her job. Barbara. <laughs> her Gorham China and all that stuff. And then we really got to the the upper class. Oh, this tell is you. how I'm how I yeah. had my pull. Got to know Mr. Kilburn. Don Kilburn was head of housing. And I go into work every day and just bitch and complain about this awful sh terrible place we had to live in and I kept saying now I'm going to quit we're going to quit if, if I can't find a decent place to live and you just couldn't find anything well then they had the apartments which were two an apartment on each end of a of a not a Quonset hut but a metal there was metal, steel uh, another bar steel full barns <laughs> almost another yeah, like almost. a reclaimed army yeah various yep. of some kind so they had two apartments in them but there was a rule that you could not have one uh, unless you and have had kids. children. Oh. So I don't know how I got that, but I sure I was down in Don Kilburn's office every day, yanking on his chain and, and complaining. Yeah. <laughs> and they finally gave yeah, us. One of those gave so us. did you stay right there through till you finished? Yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. He graduated in three years. He's I, I saw Sandy, Sandy Kilburn. Sandy Kilburn a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. 
She must not even have been a gleam in his eye then, huh? Or, yeah, no. she's older than Kurt, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, about the same age. About the same well, age. anyway, where did you yep. go from Central? Central, I came back to Roscommon and taught school for 20 years. Oh, okay. Yep. He got his master's yeah. first teaching job right here. Yep. In the last. Yep. <laughs> yep, first and last. And what did you teach? Uh, shop, industrial Real arts, arts and whatever else that... Mop floors and... Whatever else that Hulse wanted me to do. Did all those other extracurricular things. Oh. So by that time it was... Drove the bus. 1950, 51? 19, 1952. 52. 52. Yep, yep. And ended in 72. Yep. When you went in the so the you stayed the whole time in town, you didn't come to the new building, did you? The new building was, the year that I quit, the new building was opened. Oh, that's right. You did teach in a no. year? Mm-hmm. No. It was the next year. The next so year. You taught all your 20 years mm-hmm. at the one in town. Yep. Yeah. Well, what are your fondest or worst memories of that 20 years? Oh. Of that 20 years of teaching? Inhaling all that sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. didn't even have fans or not. They wear masks oh. and all kinds of things. God. Yeah. Carol, when I first started there in oh. 1952. You know, well, the shop was up in the corner. You just of get, the... you, you can't imagine how it was. Well, you know the old bus down. garage that they had the gas, the right uh, spill you? down there, right down yeah. the street from yeah. you? Mm-hmm. It used to be a bus garage. garage it something. used to be, well, it was at one time a county garage building, and then the school took it over as a bus garage. Mm-hmm. And in the back of that, What's it was about uh, 20 feet wide and about, oh, maybe 30, 36 feet uh, long, was the uh, shop. Where you taught? Where I started <laughs> okay. teaching. Wow. And it was, I it was grim. Tell you, just, it was grim. <laughs> when I went in there, uh, well, of course, you know Hulse, what a t- taskmaster Hulse was. And w- the guy that I, oh, I, I saw M- Ms. Riley. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, I had a Hulse nice talk with him. He was a superintendent, and the, and the shop teacher before me was just the, the kindest person you would Riley? ever want to meet, Lloyd Riley. As a matter of fact, I had shot from him. And he just, the kids were just getting the best of him. He just couldn't handle them. They'd try to tip the doggone bus over on him and all kinds of (laughs) stuff, you know. know, This place had a... a No control kind of guys. Absolutely. Celotex in the ceiling, you know, it had an upstairs where they'd keep the lumber or something. They'd go up and come down through the ceiling and just couldn't. And so I, when I graduated, or just before I graduated, I was... uh, Playing softball out here, and, and House happened to be playing on the same team. And I, I remember sitting down next to him on the on the bench one day, and said, "Geez, House, you know, I'm looking for a job." And he says, "Well, I might have one for you if you can do what I need to have done." <laughs> Just crack the whip. <laughs> and I said, "Well, what?" What do you mean? And he says, well, we've got to have some discipline in that school, Ralph. You know, he talked, Ralph, we've got to have some discipline discipline in here. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'll I'll hire you, I'll give you a year. And I said, well, I'll try it, I'll take it. And I, uh, Stayed for 20. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. I just remembered something. Not that this is completely off the wall, but when you came in, you said, You must play the piano. I played the piano at your house. Oh, I should have remembered that. <laughs> Gee, I, must right. have, you I must have played badly. No, because you, you said that I had a good piano. Yes, you do. Yeah. It has great action. Yeah. Sorry, Sheila. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so who was, um, did you work on the Hulse that whole 20 years, or was, did you? Work no, uh, Hans, Hans, the last, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember when Hulse quit now, but the last, well, I worked under, I worked for Hans until 1972. So 
I don't know. He came. Pardon? Then you ran. Tell us about your becoming a public oh, servant. Oh, then in 1972. Well, I had I had since 1955 been in addition to teaching school and doing carpenter work and what else? Oh, I, and I was a township clerk. Use the clock. Township clerk of Gary's Township. Uh, took Olaf Ogren's place when he when he retired. When the old town and down here. then when that was the year that the reapportionment, state reapportionment took place, and uh, this year? was an open seat in 1972. Oh, okay. uh, so I ran for the legislature and won and stayed there until June, my sister-in-law. This morning I went in the store and she said, does he really think he can win? <laughs> I said, June, he wouldn't be running if he didn't think he could win. Yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> right. Oh. I remember the campaign. Do you? We came on sure. Where did you come hmm. from here? Tower. Oh, you lived in Tower. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did? Yeah, well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> oh. Okay. But um, Jim's from Saginaw, right? Yeah, we, we were. You're both we were from Saginaw. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so then you're in the state legislature. Sure. Did you hold the same position, same... Um, you didn't change the senator, I think. You were a representative. Representative for, oh, yeah. For how yeah. long? For, for tw 20, 20 years. For 10 terms. 92. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from 72 to 92. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. What's the highlight yep. of that? Oh, uh, I, I would imagine, well, we, during my time, we were always in the minority. The year that I left, uh, they... Beca became a 50-50 uh, split, and then the next term, uh, the Republicans uh, took over. But so I didn't get a chance to serve in the in the majority, but uh, probably serving on the appropriations committee, which is where the big job. yeah yeah it's a it's a big job. It's a job where you don't. Uh, I guess you, you see the value of of money, but it's a place where where uh, millions of dollars you deal with like we deal with uh, ten dollars or you know or a, or a hundred dollars something like that budgets of you know twenty thirty billion dollars and to distribute that in the right way is uh, a big responsibility. Yeah. It does, and even though we were in the minority, we did we did have some influence on how the money was was spent. But other than that, uh, probably the the thing that I missed most about the legislature when I when I left was the parking spot. <laughs> I had a Great parking spot, right next to my office. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't have to run all over. I didn't have to go to the ramp to. <laughs> but uh, a nice perk, huh? <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. Because then you continue to work down there as a lobbyist after your terms. Right now, I'm. I. Still doing that? Yeah. I contract with a with a Lansing-based firm wow. that. Uh, so for then, just a couple of days do you a week. Specialize in different, more specific issues, or how does that work? We have our firm. It's a mother client firm. We have, uh, I think now we have all oh, between thirty and thirty-five different entities that we uh, work for. We so lobby for it. Yeah, we we have a, do a lot of healthcare work. We represent. Uh, a uh, half a dozen hospitals. Uh, we have uh, three community colleges, one uh, uh, major university, Eastern Michigan University. Uh, we do all the community colleges, yeah, Alpena, <coughs> Kirtland, uh, Glen Oaks, which is a small community college in the 
southwestern part of the state. And Roger Penske. And we also have the, uh, well, he's no longer oh. in it, but the Michigan Speedway, we represent them. And now we're doing a, a lot of uh, regulatory work with uh, hospitals and doctors, healthcare systems, and uh, in the imaging, uh, the MRIs, and all of those. Can we stop a minute? Today. Yeah, we're just about at the end to turn over. Anyway. I just wanted to say, I have. Well, let's start with talking about Higgins Lake. Where's your little microphone? About, oh. Oh, there. Oh. It's right here. Okay. Um, about Higgins Lake. Yeah. Well, Higgins Lake, I've always referred to it as my lake. <laughs> because, yeah, well, I was, as I said, this thing goes on the wrong way. I was a uh, township clerk here for all of those years, and uh, well, how many years were township clerk? for uh, 18 years. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Gary's Township is... Uh, Higgins Lake is mostly made up in Geary's Township. Therefore, it was all was of great interest to the township uh, for that because uh, naturally the township and everybody else, the schools, always collected a good deal of taxes for the the lake. I love green tea. And. Uh, what else can we say about Higgins Lake? Well, I like, how much did you go when you were a child? Oh, did you, oh, every, well, every when year. when I was a, a little kid, uh, we used to every Sunday in the summer, we would go to the Garish Park, as did all of the other Swedes, Swedes around and and others around. The park was was always full on on Sunday, and then in oh. I don't know when my dad bought a uh, piece of 50-foot lot from uh, from Ike Shirey.